Thank you for the kind introduction. So I guess here are the people who voted for me. <laughs> so basically I'm here just uh, to bring you an idea of another usage of the nanopore. And we've just started recently. Basically I've started recently with this device because we got it. Yeah, it's still the same guy. Yeah, this is a logo of my lab. And uh, once we got a nanopore device, we were thinking, what should we sequence with it? Because we have established RNA-seq and ribosec and other types of Illumina sequencing, which was working quite nicely with us so far. That's why we decided to try anything completely new. Why tRNAs, would you ask? Because really, they're ultra short compared to the ultra long molecules which you're supposed to sequence with nanopore. Ah, there are two other screens. I didn't know this. I just want to close it. Okay, so, and of course there are major problems for sequencing with nanopore because of the high error rate and the short read lengths. And of course they are very structurally stable and very well packed and they're the most highly modified RNA species. So it's like a real challenge. However, the advantages of the nanopore, so it's portable, it's quick, it's cheap, like the same advantages as we have for any kind of sequencing with nanopore uh, allow us to at least to give it a try. It's the first thing. And the second thing that the modifications can be studied very well with nanopore, as we've seen already from many talks. That's why for tRNA modifications, I will show you later, there are plenty of them, they're different. They are not well, very well known. Not all of them have their functions assigned, and that's why this study sounds very promising. So we ask these following questions. First of all, uh, we basically asked ourselves whether we can sequence tRNAs using nanopore in general, whether we can distinguish different tRNA species. Just to remind you, there are many of them, depending on the organism, but uh, at least about 40, starting from 40-something uh, for the prokaryotic cells. And uh, all of them differ by just the small, tiny regions. That's why the sequences references are short and this quite similar to each other. And whether we can detect and study their modifications and whether we can quantitate the tRNAs and their concentrations. And for this, I would like to thank my uh, co-worker, uh, Priyanka. Together, we uh, uh, tried to uh, improve the library preparation because uh, indeed you cannot use the same uh, library preparation as you use for the normal RNA sequencing with nanopore. So this is a standard workflow for direct RNA-seq, of course, without uh, in, uh, uh, inverse uh, reverse transcription and uh, what we did first we designed our own uh, uh, adapter which contained the complementary sequence to the CCA tail of the tRNAs uh, so for the RNA-seq it would be usually here starting with poly A tail and poly T complementary adapter uh, this uh, and uh, Priyanka also optimized uh, the ligation procedure and the cleaning up procedure because uh, this got out to be quite complex for these small molecules compared to the bigger ones such as DNA and RNA. And we started with in vitro transcribed tRNAs. Uh, why those? Because uh, first of all we know the sequence. Uh, they don't have any modifications, which we already heard before, that the modifications can cause miscalling, can cause uh, other problems during the sequences, uh, sequencing, and uh, we can also define the concentration of the input. So we know for sure which particular tRNA is coming into the sample. And we started just with one, and we used our mean ion, and we base call them. It was successful, it just using the uh, no normal guppy from the uh, nanopore team. And uh, then we tried to align them. And here it came to the problem. Because uh, the tRNAs are too short, the global alignment was not an option for us. If we try to, t uh, to sequence control uh, RNA sample provided by Oxford nanopore, we were able to align the 97% of the reads, which was quite similar to what other people get. But uh, with the same procedure, we were able to align less than 1% of the tRNA reads, which was completely not suitable for this one. That's why we went for local alignment. And we were able to align much more reads with this. Uh, so just for you to give an impression of what is the difference, basically you are not trying to align as much as you can, but you try to align several regions, even so between them might be gaps. Uh, if you have a higher error rate, it will give a higher probability that you will still get align, uh, sequences aligned. That's why for we went for that one. But this is only one particular tRNA. We decided to increase the complexity a bit. We mixed four tRNAs in equal molar concentrations, and we sequenced them again, base called, and did the same alignment. 
But here it comes to the question. If we sequence different RNAs, whether we can distinguish between them? Because you can see from the structure already, and uh, if you go to the sequencing level, they're even more similar than the structural one. Uh, whether we can, with this precision, say whether it's serine or histidine. And uh, we were able, of course, we optimize in parallel the cleaning up procedure and ligation procedure. So here we were able to align uh, almost 90% of the reads with this local alignment, which was already an improvement. And then only a third of them we were able to uh, cluster and classify. So yeah, you see that the clusters can be defined, but they are not completely distinguishable between each other. And uh, another thing which I want to point out, not all of our TRNAs were mixed four in equal concentrations ligated uh, similarly. So for example, this one, which is histidine, was almost not detected. We didn't get any alignments, even so they're supposed to be quite similar. And we got the mean alignment score of 34, which is with a range of 75 nucleotides, still quite low. But I will come to the next slide where I will explain a bit more about it. So basically we can use, uh, uh, use nanopore to sequence tRNAs and some of them can be even distinguishable between each other, but the amount of uh, the tRNAs we get out of it is not does not correspond to the input proportion. So why like that? We were thinking about the different ligation efficiency, which can be possible for sure, and that's why we lose some particular tRNA species during it. Uh, the other thing is, of course, the uh, huge amount of ambiguous reads because of the tRNAs which are highly similar and many of the reads can be assigned to several species. And if we have not four, but 40, there would be even less probability that you will be able to distinguish between such amount of uh, different but highly similar references. And here is the main problem which we get. Uh, as we've heard before already during these three days, uh, two and a half days, okay, uh, that uh, one of the issues that with nanopore we are not getting the complete sequence and the five prime end. And this is uh, rather a problem of a sequence itself and we cannot address it at this moment. But uh, we also not getting the complete sequence on another end. I mean, of course, for the ultra long reads, who would care about it? If you have an ultra long uh, uh, RNA, you will never consider these 10 nucleotides. If you have a perfect alignment of all the whole lengths, but if you have only 75 and you are losing three prime and five prime, what is the rest? And if you want to distinguish this rest between each other, it's even less probable that you will be able to do it. That's why we decided uh, to solve only this part of the problem, since this one should be addressed by the Oxford nanopore themselves at some point, I hope. And uh, we tried the possible solution, why not to poly A tail our uh, tRNAs to do them similar to the RNAs. And that's what we did. We did succeed. Basically, we increased the size of the molecule. We were also thinking it might increase the quality of the sequences since uh, they are really ultra short. And uh, of course, uh, uh, we were able also to use the original poly T adapter. We have not been using our own adapters anymore. So it was easy because it was an original sequencing kit. And we were hoping to increase the, uh, improve the three primes end. So this is how it looks like. So this is the original and the poly tails were added successfully, but to the different extent. So, but we don't care how long they are. And uh, here's the same uh, mix of 40 RNAs, but now they contain poly A tails, as I showed on the previous picture. And uh, the quality here is not increasing significantly, but you can see that actually the clusters are defining better and we can call, uh, we can distinguish a bit more reads and which is the most important out of here that we increase the alignment score. So we are able to get the longer alignments and I will show you on the uh, global profile later on. And we again lose the same tRNA, so I think this is rather the problem with the ligation. Okay. And here is the improvement one. Yeah, so we're getting actually three prime ends almost till the end, which is really nice. Uh, of course, uh, there are some miscodings, I believe, because of the junction to the poly A tailing, which is coming. Uh, nevertheless, this is a significant improvement compared to the previous one. And of course, it did allow us to classify more tRNAs. And uh, we tried also to sequence uh, uh, total native tRNAs. This is our work in progress. So the total native tRNAs, they differ from the previous ones that they, of course, they are much more. 
47. And uh, we also polish ATL them. However, we failed to do any alignment or clustering. And I was wondering why. And the problem was, as we think, that tRNA is the most extensively modified RNA species. And it has 13 modifications per 75 nucleotide read lengths. So it's basically every fifth base is modified. And uh, it, with existing base colors, it cause, may cause massive, massive miscalling. That's why from the yesterday talk, uh, I've heard about uh, teriyaki. I, I even wrote it down for me. So it's basically customized base color, which we would like to introduce here. Because the problem why, yeah, this are uh, a bit, I'm running out of time, but this is a bit about the modifications which we have just for you to get an impression. What is the difference between the tRNAs and RNAs and DNAs? Basically for tRNA molecule, you have uh, modifications going one by one. And it's a problem for nanopore because, yeah, it's from Eva's talk. Uh, if you apply a Khmer approach, it will not work for tRNAs because basically you cannot use Khmer's for tRNAs if you have several modifications and several modified nucleotides. And we know that several bases affect the current base which is going through the pore. So all of the supportings will be affected. That's why I was trying to apply several existing uh, RNA uh, approaches to detect modifications. And we also have different modifications. It's another problem. So it was not successful so far. But we will be trying to rebase call them and to customize the base calling procedure. And of course, we need to increase the precision. And if we get less technical errors, and that we will have higher probability to go further down with more risk. And uh, this is basically the same. And uh, overall, nanopore sequencing is applicable for tRNAs, but it has to be optimized. And I'm here for any suggestions. I am open to everyone. I would like to talk to anyone because I am just at the beginning. And uh, it's my half year working with nanopore. And I really hope that probably next year I will bring you more data saying that it's precise and possible. And with this, I want to thank my boss and Tom, who is today in the audience. And I want to thank my mom, who is babysitting my son now. Thank you very much.